Today, we are with the man behind one of the most iconic brands in the world or in pop culture. We have Simone Legno from Doki Doki. Hi, Simone. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you very much uh, for uh, having me here to an opportunity to say, say hi to my Singapore fans and people, a new, probably a new fans in Singapore. Uh, it's a very important place for me. I, I didn't come back for three years. And uh, yeah. as you might know, I've been here many, many times, 25, 30 times. Uh, I'm very happy to have this um, um, project with Nex, so I can get in touch, so I can be again in touch with so many people, uh, um, you know, from uh, uh, this part of town or for, from, you know, there is a, such a big traffic. I had my art show, so I even could show like uh, my artistic growth. And uh, so I'm just very happy and thank you for the opportunity. I think that's fantastic. And as you mentioned, um, well, you haven't been in Singapore, like you said, for three years. Yes. And like I said be before we started shooting, uh, I don't think you remember, but we first met, I think about eight or nine years ago at the Singapore, well, what is now the Singapore Comic Con, before it was SDGCC. And I've, you know, at that point, I did not know what Tokidoki was then. Today, I don't think there's hardly anyone that does not know. <laughs> um, they might not know the name, but the moment they see the art, they go, yes, I know that. Because I did a test on a couple of my friends before we did this. And like, have you heard of Toki Tokidoki? Some say, yeah, 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 familiar. But then the moment I show the art, everyone knows and they've seen it everywhere. So maybe a little bit about your journey. How did you begin? Um, how did this all start? Um, I was a classic uh, graphic designer and um, in uh, 2002 I started the website because I had to find uh, some clients to have some graphic design, some web design projects. That was the boom of the flash technology. So mm -hmm. it was a way to get in touch with all the world and uh, to put uh, my characters out, but very animated, very interesting from an experimental design point of view. Then happened that uh, in 2003, mm, my website became suddenly very popular and I got uh, an opportunity to uh, move in LA and start a company with my business partner and the former business partner, uh, Puna and Ivan. And then uh, we started like pretty small. We all had to learn uh, um, about the, let's say, licensing and character business. My business partner came from the cosmetics, very successful company but uh, we still had to uh, learn all the things around. So we started to print some samples. Um, we made so many errors, you know, it's part of growing. Uh, we had so many defeats, but then it just keep on to be perseverant. Uh, keep on to, keep always to improve everything. Uh, from uh, my own uh, art, I always search for something better and something new and fresh. Uh, from the ty type of partners, the type of collaborations that we always want to see an improvement, a better quality of the product, and uh, it's all fruit of uh, hard work and experience. Yeah. I mean, if you were to, I know, I know it's hard because you've been doing this for so long, but if you could remember or when you thought that one point that said, yeah, all right, this was the accelerator. This is what happened that now made me go to the next level. I mean, there was, uh, you know, it's like uh, some accelerators, not just yeah. like uh, boosters that get you to the next step. Um, uh, we worked a lot in terms of, uh, I think the collaborations were really a uh, great booster to spread the fast uh, through licensing the brand because uh, the main objective is not to have immediately like the big income. It's about like uh, to touch as many people as possible and, uh, and, you know, like, so there was some collaborations like uh, there was there is this big uh, company called Le Sport Sac and started really to uh, spread in all the top malls um, around the world, uh, if not around Asia, um, like my artwork as an all over. So that was 2005, 2006. So it was very revolutionary. And it, that was like the first uh, credibility thing because one of the challenges is like to, at the beginning, it's like, even if you have a great art, uh, but you are young and people doesn't believe in you, and you really have to find brave people that really says, it's, it's like gambling, you know, like people has to gamble on you, you have to just, but the most of them, they say no. And even at the middle or high level, 
like still like you are not Disney. So, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like so, you always uh, people like uh, you you have to accept that you have to keep on working hard and you ca you have to keep on proving yourself step by step. So collaborations then after um, Les Porzac and Sephora, a major cosmetics company. Then in like 2009, like working with Karl Lagerfeld was such a huge thing. You know, when characters were not like now, like in the culture, in the street culture, in the pop culture, characters are really everywhere comparing to 15 or 10 years ago. And then uh, I feel that all these collaborations uh, uh, helped me to spread in different, let's say, tiers of the, of the society, of the markets, uh, and in different countries. Uh, um, the brand, yep. and then it's like a sort of like let's say a lot of micro or uh, macro, <laughs> more like doing events everywhere. Uh, sometimes you just touch like you know a few hundreds of people or a hundred people, but some of them really become your local ambassadors. And this is, for example, what happened in a relatively small community like Singapore. It was just uh, having me always here doing comic cons, doing events like now, like at Nex, uh, or working with the Marina Bay Sands, or working with uh, many local uh, uh, entities. They really help to you know, uh, grow the local markets, and some people really fall in love for the brand, and they really do their own best in their life to support you and, and spread the brand. Well, you've already mentioned a little bit about this, but when you first began, so even like when we first met 10 years ago, 15 years ago. How has the industry changed for new creators today, new designers? What, what do you think has changed? Is it easier now or is it harder now? Is it more competitive? I think it's, uh, I mean, on one side, uh, it's, it's both. It's, it's much harder and it's easier on certain things because uh, it's a, uh, easier because now there is like social media really like you can be you know like out of your um, out of like let's say your room you can really touch some million people uh, in a very easy way like you know eight nine years ago Instagram was uh, <laughs> somehow at the beginning uh, you know people were still using quite a bit Facebook but uh, even like you were uh, probably when I was traveling in Singapore my phone was not working if I didn't have an external Wi-Fi yeah. so the communication and uh, even like doing business with international people was not so, it still needed a much more like physical presence of things. So now things are much faster. Uh, you can really, then now there is so many other platforms, you know, you can build your popularity using much, YouTube became basically more important than any TV. It's like, <laughs> you know, yeah. or uh, uh, Twitch, uh, Discord, uh, the, there is the NFT, a new community, Instagram and, so many other forms of uh, doing social media. So in that way, it's it's uh, it's easier. On the other side, is that everybody is becoming a celebrity. So you know, it's really it's really very very hard. Uh, and one thing, it's even easier because uh, I, I think that now people knows more uh, is has knows more things, like watching more and more things coming out on social media. But at the same time, lots of competitors cannot really copy from you. Mm -hmm. Because uh, it, it now, like, you just copy somebody and everybody is going, you, you get caught very easy. Yeah. And uh, I feel on that side very protected because, you know, 15 years ago, like, the challenge was that I had this very upcoming website, but the web was really almost uh, the dark web. So yeah. there was a lot, lots of major companies or, you know, that were, like, taking inspiration from my work. And, uh, and uh, so... Yeah, and on yeah, the easier like I mean there was not that many people doing uh, um, art for like or this type of pop art and getting it commercial. But I don't think even the uh, culture and the market was ready. I mean now it's like pop art and character art is very respected. Like ten years ago was still stuff for children or for manga freaks. Now it's almost considered uh, actually it's considered fine art. Yeah, in a sense, the, it, the world has changed so much. Yeah. You know, I remember being laughed at or picked at for reading comics, and now it's in mainstream culture, not even popular culture. Yeah. It's in mainstream. Everyone knows about the Avengers. Everyone knows about Disney and DC comics. Right. Mm. The Sandman is finally mainstream. He's on Netflix. Yes, you know, yes, things yes. that used to be very 
in a niche community. Um, just a couple more questions. Um, if you had one piece of advice for someone who's starting out, like I said, it's just as easy as it is difficult. Maybe it's easy, much easier and much more difficult at the same time. Right, right. If yes. you had one piece of advice to someone right. who's starting out. Yeah, nothing is easier. Nothing is easy in life, first of all. So uh, it's just about the... I think one of the most important thing, and maybe even more important than your own talent, is like uh, the perseverance and diligence. So, speak all <laughs> <laughs> the sacred words. Um, like the first of all, the perseverance in the sense that you have to continue. Because, as I mentioned a little bit at, uh, in, uh, at the beginning of the interview, there you have so many defeats. Every time, like uh, there is something going wrong. Uh, then of course there is external stuff like COVID or the economic crisis of 2008 uh, in the US. Or, but in general, like, there is many times that, uh, probably because there is even shifts in the economy and you always have to be creative as a businessman. You know, there is some era that you have to be very wholesale, some era that you have to be direct to consumer, some eras that's better to license, some era that you have to uh, work in the Web3 and uh, you, know, you really have to be very dynamic as a business person. Um, but in general, like it's about uh, at the beginning, there is always so it's more the defeats than uh, the accomplishments, and this doesn't have to to stop you, uh, because it's very easy to get depressed uh, and uh, you know don't believe to yourself. Uh, but uh, it's, it's just the nature. Even the most of people that made it, I heard stories of people, including us, that really had to live uh, out of credit cards because there is some moments that you just have to continue and. And somehow you 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 will figure it out. Um, um, then I think yes, I was saying like don't copy other people. Try to be uh, innovative because exactly there is so much out there. Or even if you don't copy, like just uh, try to look the creativity within yourself because if you there is a you cannot be too similar to somebody else. Because now you really have to be original and outstanding because if there is there is too many informations that uh, we really have to get, uh, uh, you know, that to, to digest the things. And uh, so if you are not really outstanding, um, uh, it, it, it is not easy to shine. And then uh, the third one is like, uh, I think, you know, there, there is many, like, I mean, you, <laughs> then, then I think it's, I believe in karma, I believe that you have to be a good person. You always have to, uh, in the business, Sometimes happen, some huge business happen with people you don't expect, but it's just like trying always to be very respectful and very humble because being humble like gets you always to the next level. You always want to get the best, even more and more from yourself. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, yeah, there is quite a lot of uh, other advices. These are just the, the first ones that, that uh, really come in mind or don't try to speed up things because there's another very important thing and probably it's the last one I can mention is like lots of people like um, there is the expression of no, first impression is the last impression. Uh, it means that uh, if somebody has the time to see your work, your work has to be impeccable. And what I found that many artists says is not that you go and you're just fresh from design school and you go straight to Nike corporate and say let's do a collaboration. Mm -hmm. You really have to, you know, like do stage one, stage two, and then improve and get, you know, validations at different levels, and then uh, at a certain point you do uh, step by step the things organically. Right. So let's bring it uh, back here just a little bit. So today you're here at uh, Next. So tell us a little bit about what you're doing in Singapore this time uh, at Next. Yeah, like, I mean, I've done a bit all over the world always working with the top malls that uh, really like they, they have like uh, people from all over and people, you know, we are a very family brand. Like we are a family brand, like uh, there is the, the mama, the papa, the, the kids that fall in love with the brand and the um, teenagers that comes to the mall to spend their day and uh, and I really believed from day one uh, that Toyota has first to become a pop brand and to become a pop brand, you really have to get in touch with people um, of every kind. And the mall is a great uh, 
a home for people that comes to spend their time. And so always consider it very important for the brand and for myself, like to mm -hmm. enter in touch with people. And as I say, and then I balance it with a fine art uh, a show. So like it shows uh, like a more uh, fine interpretation of mm -hmm. my art. But uh, I've done like many moves all over the world and uh, it always gives me a lot of joy. And of course it's a, uh, for uh, Christmas, so it's, you know, it's a special day. Yeah, you know? like everybody wants to spoil it, or you know, has to <laughs> do something special for uh, people they love, and uh, you know. So I know it's an important day. So I, I, I just think I'm, I'm very happy that I can decorate, the, uh, you know, the walls of um, uh, the next place with uh, you know such a happy things like Christmas. Yeah, that's very very cool. Um, last question: yeah. What can fans expect from you? Um, in the future, anything new that's coming up? Any, any new projects you're looking at? Um, yeah, like, you know, I say, I, I will definitely continue to do more things. Uh, I'm very happy that somehow the world is going, let's say, back to normality. Yep. And there is, uh, like, more opportunities to uh, keep on pushing the things. But I have, like, some, uh, uh, you know, classic collaborations that will always continue, mm -hmm. like the Hello Gitties. Now we just launched uh, uh, this, it's even here in Singapore, um, this collaboration with Bobby Brown, which is yep. a cosmetic brand from uh, Estee Lauder. And uh, I'm working with a major um, streetwear brand. Uh, so I do a lot of things and uh, you, I think you, I hope and you, you will see more and more Togi Dogi out there and there. I hope you don't get sick of it. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Well, Simon, thank you very much. Thank it's been you. a pleasure having you here. Thank you. Thank Wishing you for you your time coming yeah. here, especially with this bad weather. Right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.